let's open escrow. Welcome to part three of how to buy a home in Los Angeles. Hi, my name is Matthias, and this is a practical guide based on years of experience helping buyers and sellers navigate the Los Angeles real estate landscape. At the end of the last video, we got your offer accepted, and now it is time to open escrow. I love calling my buyers to let them know that their offer has been accepted. But when I do, I also remind them that we have a long way to go before I can give them the keys. But we just crossed one very important milestone in our journey. Once the listing agent sends us the signed purchase agreement and open escrows, I connect the buyer with the escrow holder so we can get the ball rolling. The first step is to get the initial deposit in the escrow account. This is normally done with a bank wire, but on certain occasion, you may be required to get a cashier's check, but 99% of the times a wire will do. In Los Angeles, for standard sales, the initial deposit is normally 3% of the purchase price. So on a million dollar purchase, you're looking at $30,000. Probate sales can be as much as 10%, and it can go up from there. This is a term that could be negotiated along with the contract price. But there is a reason why 3% is the standard, and that is because of California Civil Code Section 1675. The code suggests that a liquidated damages clause involving a deposit of up to 3% of the purchase price is presumed to be reasonable. Now, there's a lot more we could talk about that, but for now, let's not worry about it. An important word of warning, when it comes to wire the deposit, always, and I mean always, call the escrow company to verify the account number. Wire fraud is real. So always double check before wiring money. A standard association of realtors contract gives the buyer three business days to deliver the initial deposit. Remember, time is of the essence. So failure to deliver the deposit on time will give the seller a right to cancel the contract. And since the clock is ticking for everyone, if we have an inspection contingency, we'll need to get a general inspector out to the property as soon as possible. You, as the buyer, will hire the inspector, but I, as the agent, can help you find and coordinate the inspection process. There are a lot of general inspection companies in Los Angeles and plenty of independent inspectors. Some good ones and some not so good, and some that you should definitely stay away from. We call the bad ones deal killers they can mistake a simple settlement crack for a major structural issue. Now, as a side note, if you are interested in some sound advice when it comes to foundations, listen to my interview with foundation repairs expert, Bob Brown. He literally wrote the book on the subject. If we submitted a financed offer, meaning you need a loan, we must also connect the lender with escrow as soon as possible. Every time I say the word loan or lender, think about paperwork. Get ready for it because there's a lot of it. The loan underwriting process is made of two parts, underwriting the property and underwriting the borrower. No matter how much paperwork you give the lender during the pre-approval process, get ready to gather even more information during the escrow period. And when you think you're done, they will ask for a little bit more. And then a little bit more. I think you get the idea. But let's get back to our inspection. The job of a general inspector is to walk around the house and tell you everything they can see that is wrong with it. From a broken outlet to a missing window screen. They also test the major systems and advise when it's time to call in a specialist. Remember, they don't list the reasons why you fell in love with the house. So when you read the inspection report, keep that in mind. And most importantly, keep things into perspective. We will sit down together and go over the inspection report. Other common inspections include termite and sewer line. While more specialized inspections may include foundation, 
mold, HVAC, lead and asbestos, roof inspections, chimney and fireplace inspections. While we do our inspections, it is also a good time to start shopping for homeowner's insurance. It has been increasingly difficult to find good insurance in California. So the sooner we start looking, the better. The transfer of residential real estate is highly regulated in the state of California. So the seller will provide several statutory disclosures. And along with those, we will also obtain a preliminary title report. Remember how in the last video I told you that marketable title or clean title is probably the most important contingency of any real estate transaction? Well, a preliminary title report is a title insurance company commitment to insure title. The preliminary title report lists the exclusions. It must be reviewed carefully to make sure everything is in order. Let me tell you a little story. I was selling a property once, and after reviewing the preliminary title report, I realized that they were not ensuring access to the property. Yes, I am serious. They were saying that there was no way to get to the property. They were not recognizing the private road that was right behind the property to get to the front gate. What that meant is that if the buyer accepted that preliminary title report without revisions, they would have agreed to purchase a home you couldn't get to. Fortunately, we resolved the issue and we found the easement on the road that would connect to the property. But that's why it is so important to review the preliminary title report carefully. After all inspections are complete, the time comes for either release the inspection contingency or issue a request for repairs. Now, the form is called Request for Repairs, but it really gives the buyer three options or a combination thereof. So what it does is that it asks the seller to make the necessary repairs or ask the seller to give the buyer a credit for the repairs or make a price reduction. Of course, the seller is under no obligation to do anything, but because of the way the law is, when it comes to real estate, any material defects the seller has been made aware of will have to be disclosed to any future potential buyer. So generally speaking, when the buyer's request is reasonable and substantiated by facts, it is in everyone's best interest to find a common ground. When you purchase a condominium or plan development, in addition to the disclosures we have mentioned earlier, we will also obtain and review documentation related to the homeowners associations, as well as any covenants, condition, restrictions, which is commonly known as CCNRs. Hopefully by now, the appraisal has been completed by the lender, the property appraised at the contract value or above. If that is not the case and you have an appraisal contingency, this gives the right to the buyer to cancel the contract or get a price reduction to match the appraised value. The buyer also has the option to make up the gap by increasing the down payment. That's not always possible, but it is another solution. Are we there yet? Almost. The property may need to meet certain state and local requirements prior to the transfer. This includes CO2 and smoke detectors, low flash toilets, gas shutoff valve, and so forth. A lot of these things will be happening behind the scenes, so the buyer can focus on giving the lender all the paperwork they need. Remember the lender? Well, once the loan is approved, you sign the loan documents and you can start packing. A word on home warranty. In Los Angeles, it is customary for sellers to pay for home warranty, not to be confused with home insurance. Home warranty is like paying for an extended warranty for your refrigerator, dishwasher, and most major systems in the house. It is good for one year from the date escrow closes and can be renewed by the buyer after that. My buyer escrow checklist has 54 items on it, but why bore you to death when I'll be taking care of most of it? When the lender is ready to send the funds, you'll be asked to wire the rest of your down payment to escrow. Once the buyer's funds are in, the lender sends their funds. Of course, in an all cash purchase, the buyer is the only one to send the funds to escrow. And now that the money is in, 
the escrow officer will release the file for recording. And once we get confirmation of recording from the title company that the county register has the grant deed, guess what? You are the new owner. Congratulations. Thank you very much for coming along with me on this journey. Remember that no matter what the challenges we may encounter, I'll always be there to guide you through the process. I hope you found these videos useful that when you need help with real estate in Los Angeles, I'm always just a phone call or email away. If I don't hear from you sooner, I will see you in the next video. Bye.